everyone, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today we're going to be sowing penstemon seeds. These are also called Beard's Tongue. It's a blustery rainy day outside so it's the perfect time to be sowing seeds. Now penstemon seeds can be sown in the autumn, they can be sown directly in the soil but I'm choosing to sow mine in trays indoors. The reason I'm not sowing outside is because I, I just don't have like the space to do that. I don't have a, a patch yet where I can sow seeds outside. And if I sprinkle them in my flower beds, they will likely just get planted over with dahlias later in the year, um, or the cats will use them. So um, I choose to sow all my seeds in trays, but you absolutely don't have to. What I'm going to do is talk a bit about penstemons and go through the varieties I'm sowing. I've got seven different varieties and then um, I'll show you how I'm going to sow the seeds. If you want to skip to that bit, I'll put a timestamp up here somewhere uh, so you can skip to the bit where I'm sowing seeds. So penstemons are summer flowering perennials. They are hardy in most areas um, down to, you know, except the coldest areas I suppose, and most of them will be evergreen through the winter. That's definitely the case in my garden here in South Buckinghamshire in the UK. That's equivalent to a zone 8A apparently, um, but we get frosts and temperatures that go down to about minus 10 centigrade maximum and most of my penstemons will survive if I leave the foliage on and don't cut them back. That's not a guarantee but that's what works for me. Penstemons come in a range of colours uh, from you know the blues, lavenders, purples, pinks, whites, um, I don't, I haven't seen a yellow one, but there may be one. And this year I'm sowing a coral colored one, which I think is quite unusual. Um, and they come in various different heights. So you can get alpine varieties that are quite low growing, maybe 20 or 30 centimeters, so less than a foot. And then you can get some that will grow up to about 80 centimeters. So is that nearly three foot, I think, two and a half foot maybe? So the reason I like penstemons so much is because they are deer and rabbit resistant and the slugs just don't seem to bother them. Also, even though they don't like wet, heavy clay soil, they grow well in my garden. That's probably because I mulch my beds quite well because they do like fertile soil. They also prefer to be in full sun, but you can get away with planting them in shade. They just won't flower as prolifically. So to get them to flower to their best potential, it's best to plant them in full sun with fertile rich soil and they're just going to love that. Now the other thing you can do with penstemons to prolong the period of flowering, although I do find they flower from summer through to autumn, most varieties, but to prolong it you can do what we call the Chelsea chop. In case you don't know what the Chelsea chop is, that is simply where we cut back perennials um, during the Chelsea flower show period. That's why it's called the Chelsea chop. So about May time, we'll cut back the perennials by about half their height. And that delays the flowering for the bits that we cut back. So what I tend to do is cut back half my plant and leave half of it. So the bit that I've left will flower then or when it's about to flower. And then the bit that I've chopped back will bloom later. And so I sort of get two bloom times and that really helps. Now, obviously, to protect your plants in the winter, if you're in a very cold area or you're worried about, um, you know, them dying, <laughs> the best thing to do, I find, is to leave the foliage on, as I said. But what we can do also is take cuttings. It's quite easy to take penstemon cuttings and put them somewhere protected through the winter, like a cold greenhouse or a cold frame. And then uh, hopefully, if anything dies on your borders, then you'll have them come next year. My two favourite varieties in my garden, well my absolute favourite variety is called Stapleford Gem. Now this is mislabeled here in the UK so often, it's mislabeled as sour grapes, um, but it's not. Sour grapes is much darker purple, more of a, a grape colour, and Stapleford Gem is this gorgeous pinky blue electric colour. It's kind of got a silvery sheen to it, and it is absolutely beautiful. It kind of takes your breath away when the sun's shining on it or shining through it. I really, really love that particular penstemon. The other one that I quite like because it's got really dark stems and dark leaves and it seems to flower a bit earlier is called Husker Red and it's got these sort of pale coloured um, trumpet shaped flowers and that one's also absolutely beautiful but I find it doesn't flower for quite as long. Staple for gem just seems to keep going. Now I'm just going to go through the seeds I'm sowing today and I'll put a picture up on the screen or up here in the corner um, so that you can see what they look like. 
I'm sewing two from the Twizzle series. I'm sewing Twizzle Coral, uh, which is going to grow to 80 centimetres. And this is new to me this year. And I'm super excited about it because I really hope it is going to look exactly like the picture does and be a really lovely coral colour. And I think it's really unusual and it's going to look brilliant. Um, the other Twizzle that I'm sewing is Twizzle White and it's not quite as tall. So this one's only going to grow to about 60 centimetres, so about two foot. But those are two from the Twizzle series. Then I'm sewing a penstemon called Penstemon Whippleianus Chocolate Drop. And this is a gorgeous, rich, dark purple colour. It's going to grow to 60 centimetres tall. And these flowers from the pictures, I've not grown this one before, these flowers seem to flower more sort of in clusters rather than just all up the stem. I think they grow in clusters on the stem, so it looks really interesting. So the next two I'm growing are Penstem and Hirsutus, and Hirsutus means hairy. They've got hairy stems. And the first one I'm growing is just plain old Penstem and Hirsutus, and this one grows to about 70 centimetres tall. So what is that? That's just over two foot. And um, it's a lovely sort of lavendery purple colour with little white tips on the trumpets. And then the next one I'm growing is called Penstemon Hirsutus Pygmanus. And Pygmanus, I guess, um, that implies that it's short and it is. It's an alpine variety. So this one's only going to grow to between 25 and 30 centimetres. But I think it'll spread. So it's going to spread to about 30 centimetres too. The next one I'm growing is Penstemon Lealii. Lealii? I think that's how you say it. Apparently this one's from Idaho or Montana, somewhere like that, and it's going to grow to about 60 centimetres tall, and it's got loads of branching stems with masses of flowers on them, and they're kind of lavendery blue, which is interesting because my seed packet shows them as pink. Um, but apparently, uh, having looked it up, they are lavendery blue. The last one I'm growing is called Penstemon tube florus. And this one apparently is super impressive, very vigorous. It's got really tall stems, about 80 centimeters tall of ivory white trumpet shaped flowers. And it sounds like this one's going to flower earlier. So, you know, just as maybe the tulips are ending, this one should flower. So I'm very excited about having this one in my garden. So what I would say about sowing penstemons is that um, the germination could be sporadic. It may vary. I think with the Twizzle series that these are likely to germinate quite easily indoors, just in my kitchen. Um, I think some of the others may need to go in the cold frame. Um, or they could need cold stratification. Obviously, if I was planting these in the autumn, which would be a really good time to sow, um, you know, any hardy perennials, actually. Um, if I was sowing these in the autumn, then they would just get the natural cold stratification from the weather through the winter months. Uh, but it is nearly the end of January, and so I'm going to sow them now and see what happens. I'm going to keep them all inside um, for the first two weeks. If by the time the Twizzle series germinate, the others haven't germinated, then I will cold stratify them and I will put them in my fridge. Um, uh, or if it's freezing outside, I'll just put them outside for a couple of weeks and then bring them back into the warmth in the hope that that will initiate germination. The other thing to bear in mind about sowing penstemons, and I don't want to depress you or put you off it, is that um, we may not get flowers the first year. So they may just grow the first year and then we'll get flowers the second year. I do feel the Withers Twizzle series, um, I think these have been uh, bred so that we can sow the seeds. I feel like those are going to be easier and uh, we'll see how the others fare. What I will do is keep you updated on how everything's doing and I'll post a, a regular update so you can follow along and see what that's like. So do subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss those. Anyway, I'm going to get on with sewing them now. I am using ordinary multi-purpose peat-free compost as always and I am going to place the seeds on the surface. They're pretty tiny. Um, I'm going to place the seeds on the surface and then cover them with a sprinkling of vermiculite. Um, some of my seed packets say you can use gravel. I'm not sure how light would get through and I, I'm reluctant to sprinkle gravel on top because I think it's quite heavy for a tiny seed to break through the gravel. Um, I suppose you could use compost but I'm going to use vermiculite because I think that's the best of both worlds. Vermiculite is going to help retain the moisture on the compost and it's also going to help prevent algae growth if my seeds sit in these trays for a really long time. 
I am also not going to be putting moist compost into my seed trays, uh, but feel free to do that. That's uh, definitely a valid way to do things, to pre-moisten your compost first. But I like to put dry compost in, make sure that it fills all the areas, and then I bottom water after I've sown the seeds so I don't dislodge any of the seeds. And then I am going to cover with clear lids and, as I said, keep them somewhere warm, about 20 degrees I think is good. Um, so I'll probably keep them on heat mats initially and see how we do. Well, that's it for today. I really hope you've enjoyed following along with me as I sow the penstemon seeds. Hope you found it interesting and useful. If you're sowing any penstemon seeds, then do let me know. Or if you've got a favorite penstemon in the garden, it's always fun to know which penstemons bring you joy. So do let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to respond. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.